and welcome to this week's news bulletin from the Christian Institute. Government Minister Eric Pickles has vowed to overturn last week's High Court decision in which Mr Justice Oosley ruled that prayers held as a formal part of council meetings are unlawful. The ruling was centred on Biddeford Town Council, which had itself voted twice in support of continuing with the prayers. Mr Pickles told BBC Radio 5 Live that he will fast-track the commencement of a new law, already passed by Parliament, that will restore the right of councils to say prayers at official meetings if they wish. It's uh, called the Localism Act. Um, as you know, big acts come in by commencement orders. This change was due to be in by the beginning of April, but I've talked to officials and I hope to have the law changed by the end of the month. And at an extraordinary meeting of Biddeford Town Council this week, councillors have decided to appeal the High Court ruling. The Christian Institute will be supporting the council in its appeal. And Daily Telegraph cartoonist Matt has poked fun at the ruling, juxtaposing it with the release from prison of extremist hate preacher Abu Qatada. The cartoon shows two police officers saying, if he ever says prayers before a council meeting, he'll be straight back inside. The Christian Institute's Mike Judge said, Matt's cartoon hits the nail on the head and reflects just how ridiculous most people think the prayer ban is, particularly in the light of other recent decisions. And staying with prayers, David Cameron and the Speaker of the House of Commons, John Burkow, have backed the saying of prayers in the House of Commons. Currently, prayers are held at the start of proceedings in both the Commons and the Lords, and attendance is voluntary. A source at number 10 said the Prime Minister thinks that the prayer sessions are very important and should be kept. But the National Secular Society, which brought last week's case, indicated it would like to see an end to prayers in Parliament as well. MP David Burroughs is facing a campaign against him from within his own local Conservative Association, accusing him of intolerance over his opposition to same-sex marriage. The campaign on Facebook and Twitter is led by the Treasurer of the Association, Philip Dawson, who is homosexual. Mr Dawson says it is not acceptable for David Burroughs to vote against same-sex marriage and lead MPs in an effort to retain traditional marriage, even though David Cameron is expected to allow MPs a free vote on the issue. But the MP for Enfield Southgate said, I do not see the need for legislation to recognise gay marriage. I will vote against it it does not at all follow that I am anti-gay and homophobic. According to the Daily Mail, Mr Dawson needs the support of only 50 local constituency members to trigger an emergency meeting about Mr Burroughs' future. Mr Dawson had initially confirmed to the Daily Mail that this was an option, however he has since absolutely denied seeking Mr Burroughs' deselection. Plans to keep brain-dead patients alive so that their organs can be harvested for transplant are being considered by the British Medical Association. The BMA thinks the contentious practice, known as elective ventilation, could be used to tackle a shortage of organs. Dr Tony Calland, chairman of the BMA's Medical Ethics Committee, said, There needs to be a public debate on what will work for the UK so that people on the transplant list do not die waiting for a donor. But Professor Nadi Hakim of West London Transplant Unit said, It's not ethical keeping someone alive. They're brain dead and you have to remember there's a family next door in tears. This is how we kill any desire for people to become donors. Currently those who wish to donate their organs opt in by signing an organ donor register, but the BMA favours a system of presumed consent. The Welsh Government's consultation on presumed consent closed last month. Children as young as five have been targeted to participate in a homosexual and transgender storytelling event at a Church of Scotland venue in Edinburgh. The Scottish Storytelling Centre will play host to youngsters who will have the opportunity to explore the diverse makeup of lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender families. But Norman Wells from the Family Education Trust cautioned that these events are part of a marketing exercise aimed at presenting as natural a type of family that cannot be created by natural means. The fact remains that it takes a man and a woman to create a child. But the Church of Scotland defended the event and Reverend Mark Johnston said, It is right that children in LGBT families should have equal opportunity to share their stories in a supportive and non-judgmental environment. And finally, the Queen has defended the Church of England's role in protecting freedom of religion in an event to mark her Diamond Jubilee. 
Speaking at Lambeth Palace, Her Majesty also spoke of the proud track record Faith had of helping those in the greatest need, as well as saying that the Church of England has a duty to protect the free practice of all faiths in this country. The concept of our established church is occasionally misunderstood and I believe commonly underappreciated. Its role is not to defend Anglicanism to the exclusion of other religions. Instead, the church has a duty to protect the free practice of all faiths in this country. The Queen, who is celebrating 60 years on the throne this year, also noted that the concept of a jubilee is rooted in the Bible. Well, that's all for this week. For more information and regular updates on all of our stories, plus much more, visit our website at christian.org.uk. Until next time, goodbye.